Hi, and welcome to Things About Human-Centered Design, a place where we ask design thinkers in different industries, what might an urban planner learn from you about human-centered design? We have a great friend and um, practitioner in the field, Yue Wu, joining us today. Yue is a design director at McKinsey & Company, and he was my mentor at AIGA Chicago. Um, what I really appreciate about UA is his hunger for design, which can easily be seen in his career choices. He is a cross-disciplinary designer who has formal training in urban planning, architecture, and user experience design. Hi, UA. Um, welcome, and tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do. Hi, Manali. Hi, everyone. Super excited to be here. My name is Yue, as Manali said. Uh, I'm currently a design director in McKinsey, which is like a consulting company that, uh, you know, help business uh, think about how, you know, like leverage design to inform more impactful business decisions. I was trained as an architect and urban planner. I think Manali selected a couple of my Instagram snippets. <laughs> That's exactly why I chose these. I sort of did some snooping and I, I, I kind of want to convey your eye for design. And I felt like these showcased just the diversity in your work. And then also your interpretation of color, theory, space, layout, and just aesthetics. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And, you know, I'm really excited to talk to you about comms design um, because a big part of human-centered design processes is working closely with the end user and with a team as well to tackle a design challenge. And in order to design a solution together, um, being able to communicate throughout the different phases of human-centered design is really important. Um, and comms design is one way to communicate across disciplines, professions, languages. Comms design is such a useful skill for planners to have um, in order to effectively communicate with colleagues, with communities, and with clients. You know, comms design, for anyone who's curious a little bit more about a definition, it's it's a mixed discipline between design and information development, which is concerned with how, you know, media com communicates with people. I'm curious, um, UA, for you, how does human-centered design show up in the materials you design and the work that you do? I think one of the things I feel very important when this human-centered design elements show up in the material is like trying to figure out you know who is actually using this information um right like and how they consume this information as an urban planner you always print out a large scale map and inviting the participants to you know sit in front of the map and see like okay where you see the future development could be or what do you think about your neighborhood but one of the challenges is like a resident, right? Like they don't have this kind of bird view. When I figured that out, I think, you know, like, why don't we just like use a human centered design perspective to um, provide those information? So instead of the large scale map, we started trying to use um, like a human view for that, right? Like how do you enter the space, you know, a sequence of the things. So I think that's kind of fundamental. Yeah. And I think for planners, it is very common to be, using slide decks or reports or creating a big map and adding sticker dots to it, you know, the colored dots to understand how people navigate their space um, or what sort of design decisions to make. For you, you know, when designing these products, what are some of the fundamental design principles for effective comms design? I think the thing is like when we are like in front line of like interacting with the users or like the residents or like a community, we need to think a little creative about like what's the actual tool they will be like more comfortable with. But fundamental design principles, I think one thing I realized, you know, like in my is like accessibility or like inclusiveness is really important because we're not just like building things uh, for ourselves. You really need to put your empathy hat on uh, when you're talking doing this kind of type of engagement. So really trying to figure out who might be left out. That's probably the most important part. How does who you are designing for impact comms design? Yeah, I think um, this is actually kind of like a fundamental question, right? Like, because human-centered design, who are the humans, right? Um, I feel like there are different, totally like different aspects. One thing we talk about is like, you know, um, 
the tools, right? Like how do they, uh, what kind of tools are these people using? And then how do you tailor your uh, tool selection or like your communication method or like the media um, so that those people can just like digest information um, and then, you know, provide you more um, buy-ins. The other thing is, you might just like spend more time with them and try and figure out, you know, like what are the goals they want to achieve, right? Like what are the motivations motivations because when you're a designer like you're kind of a representative of the people you're designing for so I think being very kind of cautious but also kind of like um I guess brave about saying the things they can can't say I think it's kind of very important one of the challenges is documenting qualitative research um and drawing insights from them. I'm curious how you like to systematically go about that. One thing I feel personally helpful for me is like I try to synthesize along with my interview process. Uh, so I don't wait until like, okay, after I interview eight people, then what's the outcome? That just like uh, helps me inform, you know, like a common pattern that I see from different conversations or as earlier as possible. And then if there's any surprise, you know, like uh, along with the interview, I can switch a gear or like probe more uh, with next participants after you feel like, okay, there are some common patterns you can identify, then I will just like go with those and see like what kind of things I can synthesize and then play back with the users and see like is this what you're saying and some people may say yes and some people may say you know no this is not what I was talking about then just like probe more and like going back with the users and see like okay what are the discrepancies you you notice um so I think that comes with another perspective of this process where like it's kind of really iterative. It's not like, okay, I have one conversation with this user and that's it. Let's just move forward. And I never talk to them again. I am excited that in planning, um, we are moving towards a little bit more interactive web-based tools. This is a little bit more of your UX design hat on, but yeah, what are some of the concrete steps from a UX design perspective to building a web-based um, interactive tool? And what are the, who are the people on the team that need to be there to make that come to life? From a design perspective, you always want to start from discovery, right? Like we're thinking about this tool, um, first validate with this idea, right? Like what is the tool's value proposition, right? Like how does that help users? And just like having early conversation with the people that you're thinking about, how we use this, uh, what else can you, can it be helpful? Like, how would you imagine if there's only one thing you could do with this tool, like what can that be? I think that kind of like discovery questions really help tool builders to really think about um, what we actually are trying to build and what we're we trying to solve. Um, and on the ha other hand, like once we're trying, once we're trying to solve this problem, is there any other implications, um, you know, uh, caused by this process or like this new tool. Um, so I think having those discovery questions or like discovery process uh, will always be like the first step. And then I think uh, once you have those early conversations with, you know, like your end users, as I mentioned before, like I will try to synthesize along with those conversations as well and see like if there's like one tool, um, what could this kind of ideal tool be? So I wouldn't um, be restricted by the, you know, like the format of the tool, as, but really try to think, you know, like uh, what, a, what is a, like an effective prototype could be. Um, and then put it back with the users and see like, okay, is this kind of how you imagine like you can use this? Uh, what else is missing? Or like, is this intuitive? Like how does that um, actually solve people's problem day by day? Um, so then, you know, it's really like a iterative process. What are the most impactful, we call like feature or like functions that can have a different impact? Like after a couple of iterations, you probably have a good sense of that. So um, then when it comes to like the actual development, really trying to think uh, how people will, how the look and feel or like how the interaction patterns can, um, help people uh, 
easily navigate through this tool. Um, is everything intuitive? Um, do we need actual, does the user need extra, extra help, uh, right? Like understanding the functionalities. So that may come with more concrete or like uh, precise questions about, you know, like, do we need an onboarding um, process for that? Um, do you need, um, you know, does your interface meet the basic or like all advanced like accessibility requirements? Um, you know, if people are, if your end users are like uh, having, you know, visual impairment, like can they use this as well? So these are all good questions when you're actually like trying to lock down um, your, how this tool will actually look like, or like um, people can actually use. Um, and then I guess when you um, develop this, um, you know, as a planner or, you know, like along this process, I guess, I, I guess right, like you have researcher, um, you have designers, um, some are, you know, like more UX focused, some are UI focused, uh, and you have develop developers. Um, once it's like, again, um, in a good shape, um, put it in front of the users with, you know, like, this is a demo, right? Like, let's run, run this. Is this a desired outcome? Um, what are other in you know, like potential cases that we can use this? What are the edge cases we haven't considered? Um, and then keep iterating it um, and collecting the user feedback. So I think it's um, the, the key part of this process is just like at every step, I would just like having this communication with the user and see like, is this what you're expecting, right? Like, are there any other things we can, we can help you make your life easier? Um, or you know, like have us planners understand more about the problem uh, or inform you know the potential key opportunities and like areas that can be uh, improved. Um, yeah, so overall, I feel like every step is iterative and you know like there's no end for a good tool. Um, but mm -hmm. um, it's really just like including a lot of like synergy with different like functions of you know like the people or like the talents um behind this tool um i like that there's a lot of co-designing with the end user um in just sort of part of human-centered design work is going sort of to the people uh experiencing that very problem or challenge and empathizing and learning why and how uh that can sort of what, what are some design options out there to tackle that pain point? So I do really love the idea of co-designing a product, keeping on iterating it and putting it in front of the end user and um, hearing from, from them what features in, you know would make it better. Um, and yeah, I, I do I do think that that's really special about human-centered design. And I do think that it's a little bit hard to iterate in planning because a lot of times projects are finite and the community engagement period might be finite and infrastructure feels a little bit more permanent, you know, to put in um, infrastructure, but it would be nice as a industry if we could move forward in having more iterative processes and a little bit more flexibility in adapting and tweaking things throughout the lifetime of a project or infrastructure. Holy. Uh, I 100% agree. I, I think one of the things, you know, like um, we probably want to avoid is right, like uh, you have initial conversations and these users never see, you know, like what you guys are doing again until, you know, at the very end, okay, surprise, this is like, a, you know, like a tool and it's like not what everyone's imagined. So like figuring out like, uh, I think at which point you need users buy in, I think it just, um, increase like hugely increase adoption of the tool at the end of the day as well because they are part of the process they have been you know witnessing all the like the key decisions or like the you know like how the how the tool has been evolved uh is kind of super crucial we covered a lot um and you know i'm curious over the course of our discussions if there was anything that stood out to you specifically but you know, just generally, what are some of your top tips for an urban planner to, you know, do their work? You know, I feel like I, I'm kind of like person who is afraid of you know, like giving people tips because um, I feel like it's very like I just it's a huge responsibility. One of the things I personally do is like really um, 
talk to the users <laughs> and need to really talk to them and like think about how your you know, all the things you draw on the paper like how they actually turn into the real world and how does that impact people's actual life right like because it might just be a line of dots on the on the paper on the map but you know there might be like huge implications because you know like we're uh, i mean like as an urban planner um you guys are like operating on a huge tremendous like a massive scale um which can you know, like imply huge changes to people's lives so i would be real I, I mean like it it means power but it also means you know like how do you still carry the empathy um with your end users right and I hate calling people end users because they are actually humans. So like, how do you think about the humans? Well, with that, I think that was a great tip. Um, thank you so much, UA. Uh, let us know where people can keep up with your work uh, and learn more about you. Yeah, I have a link playing. I mean, like, you know, it, right? like it's uh, just like uh, my first name, my last thing. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Thank you, UA. Thank you so much.